Good morning, we are learning Parshat Vayechi. We're using the article Chumash, we're on page 269. <coughs> Yaakov lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. And the days of Yaakov, the years of his life, were 147 years. So from the age 130 until age 147 for 17 years Yaakov lived in Egypt with his children all his children with uh, his entire family these were the happiest days of Yaakov's life even though it was not in the land of Israel but it was with Hashem Hashem came to Egypt with Yaakov and it was with his entire family and not only that he's uh, seeing how Yosef is the ruler of a great country the huge country Egypt is run by Yosef Yaakov's son now verse 29 the time approached for Israel to die so he called for his son, for Yosef, and said to him, You know, Yaakov is calling the son that has the most power because he is going to ask him something that only he can do. Please, if I have found favor in your eyes, please place your hand under my thigh and do kindness and truth with me. Just like we see with Abraham and his uh, servant Eliezer. That when he wanted Eliezer to swear to him that he will do everything properly, he asked him to put his hand under Abraham's thigh. That has double meaning. Number one, the servant that, that, that shows that he is under control of the master. He is placing his hand under the thigh of the master as if to show I'm under you. I'm subservient to you and I will do everything that you say. And secondly, <clears throat> whenever a person swears, he usually takes an object of value to show that I'm swearing with this object. Whether it is we take a Sefer Torah or Humash and we swear, or you swear by life of someone who is dear to you. Uh, for example, we, we saw that Yosef swore a few times, but he used life of Paro. That was because he really was not uh, swearing um, honestly. He was tricking the children, children of Yaakov, his brothers, and because he was lying, he swore by life of Paro. But when a person is saying the truth, he holds in his hand an, a holy object or he swears by someone's life. Um, or in, a, in Jewish court, a person swears with the name of Hashem. And um, he says, just like God is true, so my words are true. And if I go against my words, it's as if I'm proclaiming that God is not true. Chas v'shalom. So, <clears throat> in, in the case of Yaakov and Avraham, the Brit Milah, circumcision, was a holy covenant between us and Hashem. So, in both of, 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 of their cases, they asked their servant to place their hand close to Brit Milah. And to swear by the covenant between us and God. And that's what Yosef did. And Yaakov asked him, Please do not bury me in Egypt. For I will lie down with my fathers, and you shall transport me out of Egypt and bury me in their tomb. Why <clears throat> Yaakov doesn't want to be buried in Egypt, even though that's where the Jewish people are going to be for the next 200 years and that is because Yaakov was a righteous man and we have a rule that righteous 
uh, people after their death they're even more powerful than during their lifetime people come to the grave of righteous of righteous people and they pray to Hashem in the merit of righteous people and uh, these prayers work even more than if you would go to a living um, a sage a living tzaddik so Yaakov was afraid that after he dies and he's buried in Egypt the Egyptians who are very superstitious they might make his gravesite a place of worship and they might treat his gravestone as an idol and he said I do not want to put a stumbling block in front of people I don't want people to think that I have special powers and therefore I'm God yes I may have special powers because I serve God because I'm righteous and I do everything in accordance with God's will and therefore we have a rule if you do God's will then God will do your will so yes I have special powers but only because I serve God but they will not know that and they will think that I'm independently godly so he said get me out of here place me far away that that uh, nobody should know where I am and uh, nobody should worship me another reason was that that um, in the future the land of Egypt will be um, s turned into lice all the sand and and Yaakov said I don't want that all the earth around my body should turn into lice that of course is a minor re reason uh, if there was a purpose for Yaakov to be in Egypt he would forego that that um, uh, uncomfortable feeling of lice crawling all over your your body for the sake of the Jewish people but there's no need uh, God is with them the bodies of all 12 brothers were in Egypt until the Jewish people came out by the Exodus and they brought out all the 12 um, uh, coffins of the 12 brothers and each brother is buried in the land of Israel Yosef for example is buried in Shechem um, that is the second reason that Yaakov is asking Yosef to bring him to Israel and the third reason the famous reason is that in times of resurrection of the dead people who are buried in Israel they will just rise up but people who are buried outside of Israel they will have to first roll in the ground underground in special tunnels until Israel and only then they will be able to rise up so for these three reasons Yaakov says transport me out of Egypt and bury me in the tomb of my forefathers and Yosef answered I personally will do as you have said Yosef agrees even though it's going to be very hard for him and as Midrash explains Yosef had to go through a lot of trouble a lot of convincing Paro in order for Paro to allow him to bury Yaakov in in Israel because Egyptians they had a very um, interesting idea that anyone who leaves Egypt shows that Egypt is not good and therefore Egyptians did not allow any of their citizens and even slaves to leave Egypt once you in you in forever this is very similar to uh, former Soviet Union Russia they had the same policy that if anybody immigrates from Russia to the outside uh, world it shows that uh, they were not so happy with Soviet Union it shows that communism is not so good and therefore the Russians said no one is allowed to leave especially the Jews because the Jews for sure will go and not come back and that will look bad on us they're going 
to Israel not because they're Jewish and Israel is their country, but they're going to Israel because they don't like Soviet Union and therefore uh, caring very much about their image, they did not allow anyone to leave. So the same with Paro. Paro now is not going to allow Yaakov to be buried in Israel so easily because Paro says to Yosef, why the land of Egypt is not good enough for you that you don't want your father to be buried here it doesn't look good on us that you should transport your father to the land of Canaan why that land is any better and Yosef had to convince Paro and he used various tricks uh, to make sure Paro gives permission uh, and therefore Yaakov asks Yosef swear to me in verse 31 it's not enough that you're just saying I will do I know it's going to be very difficult for you and therefore I want you to be committed to me through an oath something that you cannot easily just dismiss and he swore to him and then Yisrael prostrated himself toward the head of the bed which means he bowed down, according to some, to the Shekhinah that is visiting um, a sick person. We say that Hashem, God Himself, heals a sick person. And therefore, Hashem came to visit Yaakov and to, to give him strength in his old age. And therefore, Yaakov bowed down to Hashem on his bed and according to some interpretations he bowed down to Yosef and uh, here it was fulfilled the dream of Yosef that his own father will bow down to him and from here our sages learn that sometimes a greater person bows down to a lesser person because at, at that time the lesser person has um, a greater position so that's what happened here the father bowed down to his son because he recognized my son now is the king of Egypt my son now is the one that saved the entire world from famine so it's okay for the father to bow down to the son uh, when son's position is great it sometimes happens um, that that uh, due to circumstances the son has greater opportunities and he achieves more and therefore the father shows him honor so this way they both show honor to each other the the son shows honor to the father because he's his father and the father shows honor to his son because he's a, a, a greater person so that shows the humility the humility of uh, both uh, Yaakov and Yosef. Yaakov says, it's okay, even though I'm the father, I will forego my honor and I will bow down to Yosef. And Yosef says, even though I'm the king, but I will forego my honor and I will visit my father personally and I will bow down to him and I will take care of him and I will swear to him and so on and so forth. Now, one more idea. We said that when a person is sick, Hashem visits him and heals him. Refuah, healing, can only come from Hashem. As it says, Ke ani Hashem rofecha. I am Hashem, your healer. It says in a, in a Chumash, Parshat uh, Mishpatim. As we say in Tefillah every day, in prayer, uh, we say Baruch Atah Hashem Rofe Chole Amo Yisrael You are the one that heals the sick of the Jewish people or as we say when we leave the bathroom we say Rofe Chol Basar Maflil Asot Hashem you heal all flesh Hashem keeps us alive and Hashem keeps us healthy 
why does person get sick? So according to Jewish sources, a person gets sick only when he becomes spiritually lacking. When his neshama is inside the body fully, he is totally uh, healthy. When the neshama leaves, with it leaves the strength. And uh, the spirituality affects physicality. And what determines uh, the amount of neshama in the person's body, and what determines is his connection to Hashem, his connection to God. When a person fulfills God's will, when a person is connected in his thoughts to God, he will be healthy. And we hear this talk now that a person who is confident, a person who, is, uh, who thinks positive things will be healthy. Once a person becomes stressed out, depressed, he will get sick. And this is a direct uh, um, correlation between connection to Hashem and thinking positively. A person who is confident and optimistic, it means he has trust in God. He has trust that someone beyond him will take care of him. A person who is stressed out, person who is worried, it means that, that, that he's losing the connection to Hashem. He's losing the trust to Hashem. And therefore, he causes his neshama to leave. He severs, he cuts the, the pipe, the channel that connects him to God. The neshama can no longer flow into the body. And therefore, the person gets sick. Now, how does a person get better? If the way he became sick was because he disconnected himself from God, then becoming healthy depends on person's reconnection to Hashem. When a person smiles, when a person says to himself, I'm healthy, I'm strong, God is with me. And he turns to Hashem and says, Hashem, please heal me. Hashem, please help me. Then he gets better much faster. I have a friend here in Muncie uh, who healed himself and many other people just by talking to them about Emunah, about Hashem, about Hashem's greatness and His power and His ability to heal you. And that Hashem is with you all the time. And just by speaking with them, and he says, usually it takes half an hour. I speak to the person for half an hour about God, and all of a sudden they get better, and they, that's it. They're on the road to health. All the COVID patients that he spoke to for half an hour, and told them about Emunah and Bitachon, they got better. That's the power that, that, that uh, we get from connecting to Hashem because He is the source of all power and all healing. And that's what happens exactly here. Yaakov is old and frail and sick and he bows down to Hashem who comes to visit him. When Hashem visits the sick person, the sick person becomes better. And you don't have to wait until Hashem comes to visit you. You can, uh, you can invoke Hashem's name. You can bring Hashem down by thinking about Him. And one of the reasons you could say that God came to visit him was because until now Yaakov was worried. What's going to be with me? Soon I'm going to die. They're going to bury me in Egypt. He's worried and stressed out. And he calls his son Yosef. And he says, I hope Yosef will, will agree to do that. And as soon as Yosef says, yes, my father, I will do it. And he says, swear. And he, I'm swearing. I will do it for sure. Now, Israel, Yaakov, feels good. Now he's optimistic. Now he's happy. And right away, Hashem comes to visit him. And right away, he bows down to him. And he gets healing. And he is able to live for much longer. And that's why the, the, the <clears throat> chapter 48 says, 
and it came to pass after these things. Some time passed, he was still healthy. Someone told to Yo Yosef, behold, your father is ill again. So he took his two sons, Menashe and Ephraim, with him to visit their grandfather. And Yaakov was told, Behold, your son Yosef has come to you. So Israel exerted himself and set up on the bed. Now we're on page 271 of the Arshul Chumash. Yaakov said to Yosef, Kel Shakai, the name of God, special name of God, in English we would say Almighty, had appeared to me in Luz, in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me. Yaakov is sharing his blessing with Yosef because Yaakov will give Yosef uh, the, the blessing to continue the guidance of the Jewish people. Behold, I will make you fruitful and numerous and I will make you a congregation of nations. Now, this specific blessing was about uh, Yosef. Hashem, after all the sons of Yaakov were born, Hashem told Yaakov, I will make you congregation of nations, which means two more nations are going to come out of you. And Yaakov says to Yosef, I didn't have any more children. So what does it mean? Hashem told me you will have other two nations, two other tribes. Must be your children even though they are my, my grandchildren, they are going to be counted as my children. And in verse 5 he says, And now, your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt, before my coming to you to, in Egypt, shall be mine. Ephraim and Menashe shall be mine like Reuben and Shimon. Just like Reuben and Shimon are my children, Ephraim and Menashe, who are my grandchildren, are going to be counted as my children. This came also because when Reuven, who is the firstborn, lost his uh, status of a firstborn because he moved his father's bed, Yosef received the status of the firstborn. Reuven was the firstborn of uh, Leah, and Yosef was the firstborn of Rachel. And we know that the firstborn gets double portion in inheritance from the father. So Yosef now gets double portion because his two children, Ephraim and Minasheh, become full-fledged tribes. So Yosef is going to get two portions of land in the land of Israel. Now, in verse 7, Yaakov explains to Yosef why he didn't bury Rachel in Hebron, in the land of Israel. Why did he bury her on the way in Beit Lechem? But as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died on me in the land of Canaan on the road while there was still a stretch of land to go to Ephrat. And I buried her there on the road to Ephrat, which is Bethlehem. Rachel was buried in Israel, but she was not buried in any um, town, not in a cemetery. She was just buried on a road. So he's saying to Yosef, Yosef, I'm asking you to carry me all the way from Egypt to Hebron, and I didn't carry Rachel from Bethlehem to Hebron, which is much closer. And that is because we were on the road. And it would be very difficult for me to uh, go to Hebron to bury her. We have a rule that you do not postpone unnecessarily the burial of, of deceased. So Yaakov said to Yosef, I couldn't delay ya uh, Rachel's burial. I had to bury her right away and we were on the road uh, we couldn't take time to divert even a little bit to uh, a town and plus 
uh, we know that there is this another reason <coughs> for Rachel being buried on the road because when the Jewish people will be exiled by the Babylonians after the, the destruction of the first temple they will be walking on the road and they will pass uh, the grave of Rachel and they will cry to her and she will come and comfort them she will come out and, and uh, reassure the Jewish people and she will pray to Hashem to bring them back and that's what happened Jewish people came back after 70 years of Babylonian exile now verse 8 then Israel saw Yosef's sons and he said who are these we know that that uh, Yaakov uh, couldn't see so well the, uh, the uh, Parsh is going to tell us about it so he saw just the the shape of two people but he didn't recognize Ephraim and Menashe uh, according to Midrash he felt that some evil is going to come out of them in the future and yes um, two two evil kings came one from Ephraim one from Menashe so he was asking are these really your children I feel something negative from them and verse 9 and Yosef said to his father they are my sons whom God has given to me me here in Egypt and Yaakov said bring them to me if you please and I will bless them and now Torah tells us that Yaakov cannot see well in verse 10 Israel's eyes were heavy with age he couldn't see so well so he brought them near him and he kissed them and he hugged hugged them and Israel said to Yosef I dared not accept the thought that I would see your face and here God has shown me even your offspring Yaakov is is very happy that after 22 years of uh, mourning for Yosef not only he saw Yosef but now he sees his adult children and he can bless them and give them the status of uh, full tribes now page 273 Yosef then removed them from his knees and he prostrated himself with his face toward the ground here Yosef bows down to Yaakov Yosef took the two of them Ephraim in his right hand to Israel's his father's left hand and Menashe with his left to Israel's right and he drew close to him since Menashe is the firstborn he is older ya uh, Yosef wants him to be on the right hand of his father to receive the the, the greater blessing verse 14 but Yisrael extended his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head though he was the younger and his left hand on Menashe's head he maneuvered his hands although Menashe was the firstborn and he blessed Yosef and said O God before whom my forefathers Abraham and Yitzhak walked God who shepherds me from my inception until this day and here come the famous words of the song Hamalach Agoeloti the, the beautiful blessing may the angel who redeems me from all evil bless the lands and may my name be declared upon them and the names of my forefathers Abraham and Yitzhak and may they proliferate abundantly like fish within the land may they have many children like fish but on the ground the Jewish people are compared to fish because fish have a lot of uh, babies and also fish are hidden underwater away from Ayn Hara from evil eye so too the Jewish people are blessed with a lot of children and the Jewish people are above the eye but just like fish 
we have to be hidden. The fish are hidden underwater 